This morning, Scandinavian Real Heart announced a new project together with the Royal Institute of Technology. And standing beside me is uh, the CEO of the company, Ina Lara Perkins, as well as Dr. Serena uh, Dual. You are assistant professor at the Royal Institute of Technology. I thought we could begin with you as you are a new face here. Tell us uh, about yourself and uh, why you are here. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Um, so my, uh, my background is in mechanical engineering. I'm actually originally from Switzerland. And uh, in the last 10 years I've worked on uh, artificial hearts and cardiac uh, simulators, such that uh, last December I was called here to KTH as an assistant professor. And uh, actually within the first week I met with Ina Laura because it was quite obvious that we would start working together. Um, and then in, in spring we, uh, we submitted the project to uh, Vinova, uh, which funds innovative research in Sweden. And uh, yeah, we got, we got funded, so this summer we started working together. Ina Lara, tell us more about Vinova and the role they play in this. So through Vinova we received 4 million crowns and this is to increase Swedish competitiveness within smart electronics. Mm. So it was a real perfect fit for our project and uh, yes we started this summer and now within the first year we already have the first hybrid simulator or patient simulator available in Sweden. Mm. And for real hard, what does this project mean? So it's great for us because it's increased productivity and cost savings. We can now do more things in Sweden compared to having to travel abroad for these advanced types of tests. Um, and what we will use it for is to ensure the patient safety prior to clinical trials. Mm. And I thought uh, you could uh, walk us through how you've uh, built this, uh, this patient simulator. Yeah, so I think that the first step is really to identify all the components um, that we have in the simulator. So there's, I think, about 32 sensors. There's a lot of motors that are trying, that are controlling uh, the, these interfaces. Um, so this is what we have been working on, on until now. Um, and then the big second step is actually building the virtual patient. So our patient is really actually in the computer. Um, and, and we have it interact with those physical interfaces. So right now we are really building out that virtual human such that it's not only one, but that it's maybe a tall person and a small person and a child even. Have you named these sort of presets? Uh, <laughs> that is a very good question. Uh, no, not yet. Maybe mm. we should ask uh, the, the audience to submit <laughs> some suggestions. Sounds like a great idea. Uh, but Ina, in the press release uh, you stated that while this simulator is very similar to uh, other s uh, simulators that you've tested before, uh, this one has what's called a MRI scanner. Uh, what is that and why is it important? So it, the simulator itself does not have the scanner, but it can actually be placed inside an MRI. And that is great because we have a previous project with Linköping University where we have developed a MR compatible version of our artificial heart and we've tested in, the, in um, a scanner so I can show some slides. So firstly this is of course our the real heart and to these connectors is where we will attach the hybrid simulator so it'll be like implanting it into the simulator and uh, what we test is the algorithm which is inside of our external controller and Previously, what we've done is we have had this test rig that we built together with Linköping University and we placed it inside the MR scanner to look at what happens inside the real heart. And now the hybrid simulator would replace this, allowing us to, in real time, test many, many more different conditions. I think, do you want to add some? What could we test? <laughs> yes, um, so I think that the key benefit of having a hybrid simulator is that we no longer are restricted to to mimicking a static patient condition, but we can actually have the patient go into an exercise state or maybe have the patient go to sleep, which are very critical states for patient safety to make sure that the device operates uh, very well with the patient. And then what it will look like is, so here is what it looks like inside the MR, MRI scanner. So this would be, now is this is just one condition, but we could then go through multiple different advanced conditions in the patient to see what it looks like in the hybrid simulator. Mm. Tell us about mini hearts. Could you also test that? 
Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do with the hybrid simulator. Uh, this is why it's so good to have one in Sweden, because it will mean that we can test much, much more and much faster. So uh, effectively getting the mini heart faster to the market. And that's why I contacted Serena, because you have this excellent experience with uh, research in women, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. So in, in my past research, we, we have looked at the effects of uh, cardiac uh, assist in, in different groups of patients. And in, in fact, it's right now the outcomes that we see in, in women are, are not as good as, as the outcomes in men. So I, I was really motivated by this uh, goal of Real Heart to mm. look at these groups of patients. How interesting. Uh, but has testing already begun? Not yet. Mm -hmm. So we're planning this quarter, right, within the next quarter to start testing. And when it begins, how can shareholders best follow the development? So we will publish these results in scientific journals and also present at conferences, probably already within this year. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Then we'll look forward to reading more. Thank you, Inalara Perkins, as well as Serena Dual, for participating in answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you.